Hey, what's going on guys? It's Wade Fellin with Big Hole Lodge. We are on our way down to the Wise River where it meets the Big Hole to meet Executive Director of the Big Hole River Foundation, Brian Wheeler. Uh, we're going to join him at one of his sampling sites on his bi-weekly tour of 10 sites on the Big Hole River uh, to determine the chemical makeup and the water quality health of that river. As Fish, Wildlife and Parks looks into the trout declines on the lower Beaverhead, the Ruby, the Jefferson and the Big Hole, they're gonna need all the data they can get. And for the last four years, the foundation has been collecting nutrients, dissolved oxygen, temperature, sediments, um, and giving that to the state for the last three years, the state's incorporated that data into their report. So it's an all hands on deck moment and the foundation has a pretty good handle on the health of the river from a chemical standpoint. Now it's just up to the biologists to figure out what's going on biologically. Let's go see what Brian has to say and how he's doing it. Hey there, this is Brian Wheeler, Executive Director of the Big Hole River Foundation. We're out here uh, taking water samples. Um, we're in the Wise River right now. This is our fourth site. Um, we have 10 sites total, so I'm working my way from downstream to upstream. We've got seven sites on the main stem of the Big Hole River. And then we've got three primary tributaries that we do as well, taking uh, samples for nutrients, sediment, and dissolved oxygen, pH level. We do this at all 10 sites covering 150 miles worth of river from source to mouth, about nine times each summer. Um, we got high water right now, so in the spring, May and June, we try and do twice a month, and we try and time these samples so that we're catching these big spikes in flow, big changes in the hydrograph, so that we can get an idea of what's flushing through the system at high water. Um, and then in the summer growing months, July, August, September, um, we'll do once a month, because we're not seeing much of a change in our base flows, not a lot of shifting of the hydrograph. Um, and then last year, we added a sampling event in October, as we've watched these uh, brown trout decline, we really wanted to provide some data to the state showing what the water chemistry and physical parameters were of the river uh, during October, during the brown trout spawning season. And uh, I'm just gonna walk you through what we're actually doing when we take our samples, both with our handheld probe and our bottle samples. We gotta do it right, gotta do it carefully, make sure there's no contamination of the bottles for the lab analysis, and uh, make sure we stay safe. We're in Moose and Bear country. The first thing I do when I approach a site is we take our pictures um, and that goes in our folders with each site, bottle samples, uh, results from the lab, and then our field forms, which I'll fill out back at the truck from our handheld probe. And the key is make sure you're taking a picture of where your site is, where you're actually sampling. I'll take water samples right there. And then I always grab a site looking upstream and downstream. And then if we start to see algae through the summer, I take a closer picture of that as well. So we can kind of document with our aquatic plant visual assessment forms. Now this fancy piece of equipment, an expensive piece of equipment, is a handheld probe. So inside here, we've got multiple probes that take our readings for dissolved oxygen, water temperature, barometric pressure, specific conductance, um, pH level, and uh, turbidity. You know, put this thing in well-mixed water. You don't want to stick it in a rapid and you don't want to stick it in your dead calm eddies over here. So I'm right on our line where the current is well-mixed. I'm just giving it time to settle out its reading. 46.4 degrees. <laughs> Pretty chilly to stick your arm in all day long. All right, our sample's logged. That'll get downloaded to the computer at the end of every year and then we also fill out those results on a field form so we got a hard copy backup of everything. First thing we got to do is mark these bottle samples so that the lab knows which site it came from, what the date was, and what time of day we sampled. This one will be for susp suspended sediment. So before I do the final sample I'm going to triple rinse each one of these bottles with ambient stream water. We don't want to do this right at the surface of the water. She's flowing full, but she's pretty clean. Then we got two small 60 milliliter bottles, one filtered red, one unfiltered. These are going to be for nitrogen, phosphorus, 
and soluble reactive phosphorus. And this unfiltered bottle sample will be for total nitrogen. Same thing, we triple rinse. These ones get frozen, so you gotta leave a little space at the top. You got a syringe and filters. And to start, we're gonna triple rinse the syringe, making sure to not touch that end. Carefully apply our filter without touching it. And then with filtered water, we're gonna triple rinse our actual sample bottle as well. Analyze it for total phosphorus, soluble reactive phosphorus, which is what's actually available for plants and algae to uptake and use in the summer. So that'll help us better characterize um, the nutrient loading that we've been seeing the last three years in the river. But we're a long ways from October, so we'll see you out there in about two weeks. Well, thanks guys. If you'd like to support this very important work, uh, bhrf.org. And we'll see you on the water soon. Take care.